So first new thing, we have a new main menu. It's very, very basic. Um, but it does allow you to choose from different scenarios, which are each individual scripts, which allows for each each scenario to have a bit more code backing them up. Could be a randomizer, could be whatever, but for now, it's just these two. Um, these will, in theory, be thumbnails one day. Uh, all right, let's turn her up. Okay, so we're starting on the space station, which has the flickering foliage, which also needs to be changed to something else one day. But for now, um, they just do do their own thing. So out here, we can see there is a big ship parked outside the space station. And just over in the distance, we can see another space station, um, which is probably a bit close, really, for another space station. But, you know, I want to be able to see them from here. Uh, we still have our green friend, Greg, so, who asks how we're going. And I say, I'm good. Yep. All right. See you later, Greg. And one day he'll probably even turn to look at us, but that's for another time. So the big thing is going to warp, being able to go fast, um, which I did have already in the game, technically, but it was a little bit, well, I mean, this is still janky, but the other, the original one was even more janky. So this one, I've attempted to create a system that is a little more quote unquote physics-y, something a little Star Trek inspired. So you'll see once we get there. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, let's target the ship. Uh, you'll see when we get there, but the the, the science, that also should be in big air quotes, the science behind it is basically you generate a warp bubble and then you push the warp bubble and everything inside the bubble can go at high speed. Um, so that includes anything that's near the ship could also go at high speed if you start going to warp too close to something else. Um, and it also means that because it is external to the ship, that other factors could come into play. Potentially one, some point, you know, a nebula could affect... Ooh, coming for a rough landing. Um, you know, there could be other spatial anomalies that can affect uh, the ability to create a warp bubble, how much energy it needs, the maximum size, all of that. Uh, we'll just leave that there. Oh yeah, that's that's a decent parking job. Um, in theory, the warp bubble generator will be here, but I have, for now, placed it up on the bridge where we can actually see it in use. So, oh, once we get up here, there we go. See, the, the lens itself is a separate component to the base generator, um, which... I don't know, we'll see if that's really necessary, but uh, they are two different parts. They have a very slight lensing effect, if you can see, um, which is me mostly reusing the lensing effect from the actual warp bubble itself. So, can we target the new space station? Are we too far away? We might be too far away. All right, never mind. Um, so we've got a new warp indicator there. Each thing needs to be charged for warp. The warp I'll get in the corner of the screen. The warp engines and the warp generator have their own charge and the radius of the current warp bubble, which is also reflected here in the speed and the size. Um, if I fire it up, there you go. I press the button to say go to warp. You can see this generator starts spinning up. And I can't look at two things at once, but these are all fired up as well. Um, if we look outside the ship, there is a big old warp bubble which is all distorty and stuff um i went for a, a plain old sphere to begin with uh but that looks a bit too boring even this is a little bit odd but it's at least a little different so uh anyway and uh, so now i'll go to a low warp so we don't go too fast so we can actually see outside We've got these warp lines to help indicate the direction the bubble is moving there isn't anything that really helps indicate that the bubble itself is being propelled. It just it just moves. So, let's see where can we target that yet? Nope, can't target it apparently. And we're coming up on it. Ooh. <laughs> yes, the uh, the way that you come out in and out of warp is a little bit a little bit silly still. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, the bubble was still collapsing. 
So, potentially, let me start that again. Charge the warp engines. Yeah, going to warp. It creates the warp bubble. Yeah, uh -huh. got it. Um, and then once we've reached the safe limit, and that says from going to warp to in warp, we can start moving. And then we can come out of warp. And then it collapses the bubble. And then, shoot. And then that goes back to sleep. Okay, it's a little, it still needs a little work, um, but does it, it does the job. It certainly gets things places fast, even at low throttle. Um, it's definitely been a thing of a lot of playing around trying to figure out what numbers are good to use, because certainly within a lot of sci-fi, it's, uh, yeah, we can't target that. Cool, cool. Um, you know, having exponential speeds means that the size of the map suddenly goes from something that you can cross in, I don't know, 20 minutes at a high warp. At an exponential speed, suddenly you're across the map in two seconds and you're like, that's that's too great of a difference. So it's there's been a lot of tweaking. And even with the physics of the bubble right now, there is a warp bubble pressure that is used to maintain the bubble, otherwise the bubble will collapse on its own. Um, same with there is a warp like speed, um, what's the word, sort of degradation of the speed as well, which is sort of a, supposed to be a limiting factor. I had a lot more variables involved before and I was trying to graph them all out, trying to get very mathy and all of that. Ooh. Yeah, the, the gravity likes to fight the shuttle. Whoops, I just pressed going down there. Um, this is probably something that could be fixed too. All right, all right. There we go. you can see the other space shuttle. Shuttle? Space station over there. Um, but yes, so I had a lot of different variables involved and it was getting very complex and it kind of just didn't make it more interesting. So really I'm gonna make it just based on there is a pressure for a warp bubble and then use the rate of change of that warp bubble for other effects which right now there isn't really much other than the fact that you know the, the pressure that's in there uh, will affect the size of the warp bubble by the cube um, so that's sort of what limits how big the bubble can get and why it slows down even though you're adding a constant amount of pressure um, whoop, gravity's still a bit wacky here um, I think I know why that is I think it's actually just this landing pad that's wacky, and that one is is fine. Maybe. There we go. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> I mean, I guess that shows it's a different space station. So there should be a different NPC over here to really help indicate that this isn't just the exact same space station. Other than the fact that all the foliage is gone, we have Fred. Oh, hey. My name is Fred. Good job making it here. It was a lot of work getting here, Fred. You wouldn't believe. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's been a it's been a surprising amount of work trying to get everything working. Um, I had a problem for a while where the kinematic camera control camera camera control kinematic character controller was fighting with the uh, space graphics toolkit for snapping. Uh, with the large distance, the floating object stuff, um, which was causing it whenever I exited the ship to just throw me across the universe at very high speed. Um, and I really couldn't figure out why, because it wasn't a physics thing that was happening. Nothing had a weird velocity. Nothing had an input into it. It was just something was being snapped back and another part of the kinematic controller was out of sync. So it kept pushing it back out of the snap zone and then it got snapped forward and it was a real mess it was a very confusing two days when everything said velocities are zero yet i was clearly moving at high speed and even more so when i paused the game the time scale is set to zero all the physics should stop so when it wasn't stopping that was um that was a problem anyway um yeah so uh, I could probably go into more detail about some things. Uh, let's see, how's the gravity? It's back to normal? Nope. Hmm. I think I know why. I think I've got the wrong gravity mesh set. I've got 
Yeah, I think I've got the wrong gravity mesh set for this platform. That's okay. The shuttle... Uh, well, it's probably fine. I can just get back in the chair. Let's... Let, let's go! No, the gravity doesn't know which way's up. That way should be forward. No. Alright. Gravity's messed up this. We are stuck here. Well, that's okay. I might cut this part out. Let's get back to the ship. Alright, so I just did a reset. <laughs> Something is clearly a little broken with the gravity, but only on that space station? That's weird. Anyway, what I really wanted to show was firing up, charging all the things. Let's see, yep, and then creates a warp bubble that starts spinning. You can get a closer look at that, why not? I had fun creating different particle effects, so that's been good. And, and then let's just let's just go to warp. So you can see the direction of the warp kind of lags behind with where you're facing. Which is mostly to do. Uh, let's target that. Yeah. Which is mostly to do with the fact that there's a limiting factor that degrades down in the direction that it's currently going, and then it's being a new direction and is being added based on where the ship is currently pointing. Because you this is just the ship rotating itself, and then that's affecting the direction that the warp engines are applying the thrust to the bubble. So the, you aren't actually rotating the bubble itself. So Let's get, a, let's get a look from the outside. Kind of see. Had some, also had fun making this particle effect. So, yeah. It's coming along. There's definitely. It, this definitely gives me a lot of ability to start testing out actually going places. Because before, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really easy to test out. Everything was always being tested just very locally to where I would currently was. Um, so now having the ability to go places and go places reasonably fast um, is uh, is a big benefit. I feel like the throttle up is a little bit slow. The warp engine is clearly able to keep up with what I'm currently asking it to go, um, which means this really does need probably do need something else faster way. But there you go. It's lagging behind a little bit now. Um, but yes, this other number here is the current pressure that's being applied by the warp generator in order to maintain the warp bubble at this size. Um, and I've been meaning to add in some more dials to indicate like what the current size is. So in case we need a bigger warp bubble, if you want to bring more things along with you for the ride, you know, like gather a bunch of asteroids close to the ship and then just like make a warp bubble and off you go. As long as you don't rotate into them within the warp bubble, as long as you set everything up, up and go, you should be fine. Um, yeah, so there we go. You can see it's yeah. It's not, not having too much trouble keeping up. But yes. Anyway, um, I definitely still need to play with some of these numbers. Like yeah, I, I wanted to take a while to get between different star systems, but not so long either. Like then I also want to have a way of uh, autopiloting, just point at a ship, uh, star systems, hit go, and then you know, it'll automatically come out of warp once you're nice and close. So, um, yeah, we can also probably show the shutdown sequence in a less chaotic environment. So if I tell it to stop, I'll have a target speed of zero and then it'll try to decelerate. And then once it reaches zero, slowing to exit. Yep, and then it'll start to collapse the warp bubble, so everything's back to normal space again. And that's sort of the negative pressure. And then the thing goes back to sleep. There we go. That wasn't so chaotic. You can see we're back in normal space, no more wobbly stuff going on. That's starting to look a bit small, smaller. I still clearly took a while to get here. Um, I think, yes, that planet's not getting the light anymore because of the whole long distance light shenanigans. Anyway, that's why that planet is dark, but it shouldn't be dark at this point. Um, anyway, thanks for seeing through all that. It could be a while before I do another devlog. 
you know, apart from the fact that this took a surprisingly and annoyingly long amount of time to get this even this far, um, I'm going to go on holiday, so I'll I'll probably be putting this down for at least a little bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, see you when see you in the next one.